All right, let's go without further delay to our guest. Ann Coulter is with me. Now, Ann, this is becoming a wonderful tradition because you're you're not what's known as a early riser. And <laughs> So whenever I do a pre-record, uh, the, the first person on my speed dial is always Ann Coulter because you're my favorite guest. And I, I don't think I, I – no disrespect to my other excellent guests. Uh, and so it's always a pleasure to speak with you, and you'll be with me for the entire hour and unfiltered for Christmas. So, Ann, uh, first of all, how does Ann Coulter celebrate Christmas? I'm, I'm celebrating with my family. I have a beautiful Christmas tree. Maybe I'll tweet you a picture of it. Please do. Um, and I really wanted to celebrate this year by by going to visit the wall, uh, oh, yeah. but we don't have one yet. It, so it's so I, funny. I guess you, that'll be next year. Yeah, you, you cut right to the chase. And I was looking at the president's resume for year one. Uh, and remember, Ian, we started this year being promised that he was going to get impeached. It was it was roughly 115, maybe 130 percent chance he was going to be removed from office. Uh, which which is mathematically impossible. But if you watch CNN <laughs> on a regular basis. <laughs> and uh, they, they I ch- do. Yeah, right. And it, <laughs> we have to. It, 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 we knew that's how this year it was going to end with a President Pence and perhaps even a, a President Ryan. Who knows if 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 if, Pre- if Pence headed for the hills. Uh, but now we have a president who's got a record, which is quite impressive. Judges uh, uh, doing well. ISIS in retreat. Tax cuts. Regulations getting cut. Drilling. Uh, is back in America. Dr- Jerusalem embassy is going to move. The, the media has been exposed as bigger frauds than ever. It's such a shame, Anne, that none of it actually means anything so long as we don't get a wall. Absolutely right. Beautifully put. Um, it's a lot like uh, the, uh, the Bush administration. I mean, he, he, Donald Trump, the emperor of God, he defeated the old Republican establishment. It's not that I'm against any of these ideas. Tax cutting is great. Um, I love that they're opening up Anwar. That was, it's funny that I didn't know that until after that the caught me off guard. I was so happy about that. I remember that from my college Republican days. Uh, I, I remember that debate raging, and I remember uh, uh, thinking that that, that that was one that we, we would never return to that again. That was a lost, a lost cause. Apparently not. Yeah, I'm glad they slipped that one in, though they didn't quite get to ending the hedge fund manager's loophole, which really ticks me off. Um, but just, I mean, tax cuts generally. I, I saw the strangest interview um, actually, it was on Fox. It was that Cory Gardner from Colorado talking to Dana Perino, and the two of them were chuckling about the Democrats having to take the position that they're in favor of raising taxes. And, well, remember how well that worked out for Walter Mondale. Um, and I yelled across the room as I was trimming my tree. That was 30 years ago. Mm. The country has changed quite a bit since 1984, and mostly demographically. We don't live in a country where, where Ronald Reagan could be elected in a small congressional district of California, much, much less Connecticut, Massachusetts. Um, um, I mean, Virginia. Virginia's lost to us now. State after state has been changed demographically. And, I, I, I mean, the American people are aware of this. They're aware that, that their job prospects have gone down, that their wages have gone down, that their schools are being overwhelmed with, with, with immigrants who, who, who need English as a second language classes, and that's what all the school budget's going to. And their kids, at least some of them, or their friends – kids or, or cousins, an awful lot of them getting addicted to heroin, being brought in across our wide open border, and that's why Donald Trump won. All of these victories are going to be Pyrrhic victories if we live in a country where no Republican can be elected president ever again. And, and oh, by the way, the next part of the conversation with um, Cory Gardner and Dana Perino chuckling over, oh, good luck running on, on raising taxes. Remember what happened 30 years ago when we were living in a completely different country, you morons. Um, then they went on to talk about how important it was for Republicans to pass DACA. <laughs> yeah, and and, and, and oh that's my gosh, where... when are the politicians going to wake up? Americans understand what's going on, which is why every time you allow Americans to vote, every time it's on the ballot, starting with I might add California, right. um, with Proposition One Eighty Seven, back in the in the nineties. Every time Americans are allowed to vote, they vote for less immigration, fewer benefits for for immigrants, um, for for. Um, 
um, and a, an obscure economics professor, Dave Bratt, over a member of the leadership, Eric right. Andrew. We have put Donald Trump in the White House. Uh, I'm a little annoyed that, that Trump isn't doing this on his own, but what is with the rest of the Republican Party? What will wake them up? Yeah, and it, it's such a wonderful, wonderfully important point that you're making. And this is one of the subjects of a recent column of yours where you actually implore the Republicans to do something popular. If you look at the uh, – I was delighting this week at the almost slapstick farcical uh, uh, pr- praise puff pieces about Ivanka Trump's role in passing the, the tax cuts, which I, I just find them so delightful because they're so absurd. Uh, that the, 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 this is a liberal Democrat. At last I checked in. Uh, the the bill was voted for across party lines, aside from twelve or so Republicans that voted against it. There were zero Democrats that came across the aisle. The bill has something like twenty six percent approval rating, maybe lower. And we're writing what a great achievement this was for Ivanka, who got, I guess, the child tax credit up a little bit, which is fine. But it's a I don't want I don't want to dismiss that. You know, that. I hate the child tax credit. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a I'm I'm trying to be diplomatic here because I don't want to uh, I know our reputation is bright bar. As were Javanka haters, and rightfully so. Uh, but it's a. It, but just reading what a huge achievement this is for a bill that is entirely unpopular. And in the meantime, you point out in your column just how popular uh, conservative style and Coulter style immigration reform would be. Yet, if you recall, and I know you wrote the book on it quite literally. Donald Trump was the only candidate out of 17 who ran for the Republican primary nomination who actually campaigned on less immigration. Even Ted Cruz wanted increased legal immigration. Yep. And the the vast majority, not the majority, the vast majority of the country wants the same or fewer immigrants coming in. And yet the, the memo, it's a it's a we got 20 million readers a month at Breitbart, 25 million, hundreds of millions of page views. People read your column, and why don't people get it? I don't understand. The information is out there. People don't like this widespread, unchecked, unfettered immigration. Yes, and if nothing else, I mean, apart from the fact that that Republicans, as Donald Trump tweeted back in, I think it was 2013, when um, Rubio was pushing his first, you know, kill America amnesty bill, um, and and about the third or fourth that the American people had shut down. Donald Trump tweeted, Republicans, you're, you're, you, this is a suicide mission. All of these amnestied illegals are going to be voting for the Democrats. It is, besides the fact that Republicans, as Trump knew back before he was president, um, apparently, um, not only is this suicide for the Republican Party, and I don't know, I don't think I'd cheer if I were a Democrat. Um, I'm, it's not exactly preserving the Democratic Party in its current form either. It's about to become um, all all uh, ID pol- identity politics. Um, I think there's a reason that the, the Democratic leadership is all um, white and over 80 years old. <laughs> That's the end of any any white leaders in, in the Democratic Party. Um, so, ha-ha, Nancy Pelosi and, and the rest of them planning on running for president. Um, but apart from being a suicide mission, what if – I mean, if you're just a purely cynical politician and all you want is short-term popularity – I got it for you. I have it right here. You'll be amazed at how popular you'll become if you start pushing the issues that Donald Trump pushed, that Dave Bratt pushed, that the American people continuously keep voting for every time they get a chance. Um, I don't know if it's cowardice or corruption, but but we can't get these Republicans to notice that. that. Yeah, and let's not forget that. And and the thing that you make so hilariously clear in your column, which is one of the things you do uh, quite well, is is you make uh, points that are hotly debated seem incredibly obvious, which is, I think, a pretty high compliment for a columnist. Uh, but if you think about how we, we can't agree as a society on whether or not we want to keep more of our own money like that, that's an even split. In fact, a lot of us don't want to keep more, right. of our, more of our own money. But we have an overwhelming agreement that the immigration system is totally screwed up and it's screwed up in the direction of too many people are coming in unchecked, whether it be the, the wall or chain migration or legal immigration or all the above, whatever your issue is, we all agree we need to start slowing it down or right? we don't all agree. Agree, but over two thirds of the country agrees, uh, and yet the Republicans, who last I checked had both houses 
of Congress and the presidency and the president ran on these exact issues. Zero movement on that in the first year. Oh, absolutely zero movement. In fact, movement in the opposite direction. It's the damnedest thing. We elect Donald Trump and all they're talking about is is amnesty for dreamers, which I think it's worth pointing out. Um, well, two things on on the dreamers. Um, I was I was just biking um, my 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 annual <laughs> Christmas bike ride, and I noticed <laughs> lots and lots of Hispanic workers um, on my on my pleasant little bike ride. And I, w- I mean, it, it it has to be said that the many of the of the legal and illegal um, low wage workers they're incredibly hard workers. They're really nice people, and it occurred to me on my bike ride that I. I actually like all of the all of the illegal immigrants except the dreamers. They're the ones I want to deported first because they're the activists. They're the obnoxious ones. They're the ones who go to congressional offices and stamp their feet and say, "How dare you not rush to grant us amnesty?" Whereas the actual the actual illegals don't have time to be protesting. They're they're busy working, being polite, being so friendly and nice, and saying Merry Christmas. Um, no, the, the let's start by deporting the dreamers. Um, that's point one. My <laughs> point two is. Um, don't be fooled into thinking that it is only, you know, these, these, um, you know, warm puppy illegal aliens. Um, and by the way, I don't like any of the ones they're putting forward. I notice we don't see a lot of them on TV because again, the dreamers themselves are, are heinous and anyone would, would want to deport them. Um, but, but don't be fooled by all of the nonsense about, oh, it's just this limited group of people. And I mean, even, even Breitbart writers say it could, and, and CIS and the immigration restrictions group, they keep saying, this could amnesty up to, you know, X number of, of dreamers. No, 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 no. It amnesties everyone. I promise you, people who have never set foot in America will be coming here claiming, because I promise you, proof will not be required. This will go before our courts, the same courts that are refusing to let Donald Trump exercise um, his full constitutional and statutory authority. They will come and say, oh yeah, I've, I've, I was brought here as a child. Um, yeah, I'm 45 right now and I have no job skills and I plan to um, instantly get, um, have <laughs> get, get lots of expensive medical treatment on you, thank you, American taxpayer. Um, but I have no proof. Oh, you can't ask me for proof. And the judge will say, oh, you're right. That's unfair. We can't ask for proof. Amnesty, you count as a dreamer. This is a, we've been through this before. We have done this before. The judiciary is worse now than it was back when they, they were expanding the agricultural amnesty, something I write about in Adios America. Um, it was supposed to be this tiny, tiny, the agricultural amnesty was part of Ronald Reagan's yeah. amnesty bill. It was supposed to be a tiny little amnesty just if you had, you know, these hardworking, actually the ones I was just describing, the hardworking um, guest workers, some illegals working on farms. If you could prove you'd worked on an American farm um, sometime in the last, I forget what it was, oh, the last calendar um, actual year, um, you could be, you could get in on the agricultural amnesty. Oh, you're a hardworking agricultural worker. Um, At one point, they had close to it, there was supposed to be a few hundred thousand. They had um, more than 800,000 applications, um, of which, I think it was 867,000 applications, of which they had determined more than 800,000 were fraudulent. And they were all amnesty. Wow. 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 They all just that, get amnesty. Why? That, because courts say, and and by the way, they were still being amnestied from the 1986 amnesty bill a few years ago. They're still coming forward. They're just moving to America and saying, "Hey, I want to get in on this too." And oh, it's so unfair because it's, you know, I was working off the books. How can I produce records? Well, how much how much harder is it to prove the date on which you entered our country illegally? No, any amnesty, any amnesty because of our courts, no matter how limited it is, they could limit it to rocket scientists with a PhD. It will go before our courts and everybody gets in. It's lights out for America right away. Yeah, that, that's right. And and you get to say it directly. And uh, sometimes in our reporting, we have to we we have to keep it a little more uh, uh, vanilla than that. But our own John Binder, who's our top reporter on the issue, along with he's Monroe, so great. Our, yeah, he he's spectacular. He's been our rising star of the year at Breitbart News. I think goes without saying. 
Uh, but he's a, he, he, he says exactly what you say, which is that like, it's not being cynical. It's just reality that this is, this is the minimum numbers we're talking about. It yeah. always ends up being more. And the fact of the matter is, why are we even having this discussion without our wall that we were promised? And is the key to the whether or not this presidency is going to be successful without a doubt? So uh, we had to take a break. And when, when we come back from paying bills, I, I, I want to expand on what I sort of introduced at the top of the segment, which is that why if the wall does not get built, nothing else matters. And and, and I want to, that's, the, Anne is going to explain what I meant by that because she's got, I have a deep affection for Anne, as you guys can tell. But Anne, uh, but before we get back to serious stuff, uh, well, would you have a favorite Christmas song or anything like that, or favorite Christmas tradition? I mean, the, the Americana element of Christmas is not to be overlooked. I love the religious ele- uh, element. I'm a church-going Catholic, and, and I, I try to have a Bible-centric life, at least to some extent. But it's a the Americana of Christmas is just spectacular, and we are losing sight of that a little bit. But I think we're hit, trying to cling to it. Many of us are, at least. Um, I love every part of Christmas. I especially like, um, and I know this this is not the religious aspect, I love the Christmas lights. My birthday is in December, and I'm always, I feel like the whole world is celebrating my birthday. New York is so <laughs> beautiful at Christmas time. Um, and I also have the added fun of watching my oldest brother decorate the tree while grumbling to himself. Pagan tradition. Christmas tree is totally pagan tradition. <laughs> Which it is. It's crazy that people who don't like Christmas, um, for religious reasons, complain about Christmas trees. Um, no, we took it from the pagans. It really, this has nothing to do with Jesus on the cross. They're just really pretty. And haha, we got it first. <laughs> yeah, that, that's amazing because it, you can do that in reverse instead of the, 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 the pagan elements of society hijacking our religious traditions and then kind of uh, uh, twisting them around and ruining them. We can do the exact same thing. Actually, the, Christmas wasn't nearly as wholesome of a holiday just a few short centuries ago. It used to be sort of a, a festival day for revelry, uh, and it, it became more wholesome. So it actually the pendulum does swing the other direction. We made it more uh, about a calm family celebration of warmth and generosity. It used to just be debauchery, so or at least more so. <laughs> Uh, which is, which is, so, so it's it, it's always always something to to keep in mind, folks. That we can we can push back. Writ large, turning the entire debauchery of humanity into civilized behavior. <laughs> wow, that could be my headline. Fantastic stuff. Ann Coulter, uh, once again, is, is with me, and we teased before the break uh, something that's important. And and I'm going to keep banging this gong banging this drum for the rest of the year and i know it is going to start irritating listeners but it's so long as i have a platform i have to keep mentioning this because i really do believe if the wall does not get built then uh, all this wonderful achievement uh, all these wonderful achievements by this president it's not going to make a dime's worth of difference because not only are we setting our society on a path where we're just legalizing undocumented Democrats? But uh, we're not going to win any elections because we don't keep our biggest promises. Uh, and and we're going to let down the base, which is in the last election, the base delivered it for President Trump. That's my thoughts on it. I really think this is a do or die thing. And we're a year in and so far it's die. No, I know. And I'm very concerned. And I don't know why all Trump supporters aren't concerned. I mean, you can still love him. Um, I just read, I just read a headline. It was it was on your web page, Scarborough's making fun of all these Republicans who praise Trump in public and mock him privately. Um, that's, and that's I looked a at it. Headline. Thought, Thank you. Huh? I'm pretty much the exact opposite. <laughs> I denounce him publicly while praising him yes. in private. Um, I, I, I mean, yeah, I, there's a lot to love about about Trump. I love that he's taken on the media. I lo- everything the media hates about him are the things I love the most. I love his tweeting. I love his vicious attacks on when when he gets attacked or, you know, just for the fun of it on liberals. I love that stuff. But you got to be worried as a Trump supporter. And I don't understand why so many so many of my fellow Trumpsters are not more worried. I mean, it's, the, people always say it's coming. It's coming. Well, the, the expression is, yeah, so is Christmas. It's Christmas. 
it's Christmas and we haven't even started the wall. Um, what next Christmas am I going to be told? Yes, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Um, and and yes, it's important. Number one for for saving saving the country. By the way, so are deportations. I mean, among the most uh, um, the annoying thing about the most annoying people in the universe, dreamers, is that unless they get deported, just by not deporting them, they're all becoming citizens. Um, Alex, all of them. They have babies. Yes, they have uh, their anchor babies. And by the way, when is Congress going to overturn that that nonsense? There's nothing in the Constitution about being born here makes you a citizen. No other country does that. It's craziness. Just, yes, just sorry. pass a law to make it clear. Yeah, and- and, 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 and lawyers, I mean, I've heard Mark Levin go through this stuff all the time and time again. And like, it, it doesn't, I don't even see the, it's just one of these things that gets beat into you. Uh, it's carefully the, uh, explained in Adios America. It's a footnote from a 1982 Justice Brennan opinion. He just slipped it in. That's right. And it's that's, coming back that's to me now. where it came from. This People is another one like of those. It, you know, it sprung from James Madison's head, and, That's and people right. were sitting around in colonial days at the time of the American Revolution. Wait, wait a minute! You're not telling me that if an illegal comes into the country and drops a baby, that person isn't a citizen. We've got to fix that in our constitution. No, it's crazy. It's insane. Um, and and liberal federal judges and and Harry Reid have all said this is crazy. It's crazy. But as, and by the way, I believe Trump could change it on his own. But also illegals get married. Um, if you don't deport them, <laughs> they're all are, are, are we even all allowed? getting amnestied and becoming citizens anyway. So we need a wall. We need deportations. Yes. And not only is it going to wreck the country if he doesn't do this, but it's going to be a wipeout in the midterm elections. And, you know, the first thing the Democrats will do if they get control of the House and the Senate is impeach and remove Donald Trump. That's it in a nutshell. And and, and 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 by the way, are we allowed not to? Uh, can we just have common sense for one second? And just the, <laughs> the, the 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 founding fathers did not envision a country where the location of a woman's uterus at the time of birth was determinative <laughs> of, of citizenship. I mean, can we be? It's so absurd. Can, can we at least use common sense for a second? That that was, of course, not anything that, that was intended. The amazing thing is how Democrats have flipped on this. I mean, they've flipped on all of this. It was not very long ago that the Democratic Party um, was sort of leading the way in, in, in opposing both legal and illegal immigration, because the, back then they were still pretending to care about the working class. Um, now they've given up even the pretense of it. But, um, as a, you know, the Barbara Jordan com- Commission, they mm. produced that report that was as hardcore as Donald Trump, as hardcore as Ann Coulter is on immigration. Barbara Jordan, a genuine civil rights hero, a legitimate civil rights hero, she sh- chaired the commission. I mean, everyone knows that, that illegal immigration and low-wage legal immigration um, – yeah, it hurts low-wage American workers. Who does it hurt most of all? Uh, African Americans, of course it does. But but the Democratic Party doesn't care about African Americans. They don't care about about Hispanic Americans. They don't care. They certainly don't care about the white working class. Um, and now they're being pretty open about it. Um, so you had Barbara Jordan Commission and their recommendations endorsed by President Clinton. Not that long ago, we had Harry Reid, former leader of the Democrats in the Senate, um, take to the Senate floor saying, this is insane. Women are risking their lives. We're luring them here. We're like, we're like <laughs> um, you know, a matador waving the, waving the red cape. Just get across the border, drop a baby, and you're taken care of for the rest of your life. So they're dying in the desert trying to get here. And Harry Reid, again, this is quoted in Adios America, goes on and on saying, what kind of country would do this? This is insane. And then, whoops, um, Democrats discover, hey, hey, the anchor babies, when they grow up, they're voting for us and their parents are voting for us. And all these third worlders were dumping on the country legally through chain migration and diversity lottery and refugees. They're voting for us, too. Um, not only do we not care about the working class, um, not only will we not mention how this is really, really harming the people already here, mm. um, but in fact it's racist to, uh, to oppose the continuous dump of third worlders on America. Wow, it's a, such important commentary. Uh, and, but as you point out, if there's any indication – uh, from what I'm reading in the news this week is that the globalists in the Republican Party who control the party apparatus in Washington, D.C., they're eyeing an amnesty. They actually want not a wall. They want to go the other direction and 
undo a promise the president made on the campaign trail and literally legalize more people to become citizens, uh, even though they came here illegally. And this is something that is – I think it's party suicide personally. Uh, yes, and, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, go ahead. And I can't believe I'm watching it. I mean you see this come up. You see this Cory Gardner um, chattering away with, with Dana Perino. No, the, both, both – 100 percent of the Democrats for purely self-interested political reasons – and um, I'd say more than 50 percent of elected Republicans in Washington, um, again, not sure if it's because of corruption or stupidity, but it's, there are no other options. Um, all they want to do is wreck our country by granting this unlimited amnesty with no proof required. Um, it's, I just don't know what else we have to do. Americans have shut down, have shut down amnesties. That they try to just sneak through in the dark of night. You know, yes. these, as I point out in my column, if if the Chamber of Commerce's position were popular, why don't they discuss it openly? Oh no, 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 no! Back when David Axelrod met with Rupert Murdoch, remember that famous meeting? It was uh, the cover of the New York Times magazine, sure. or maybe it was the yes. front page of the newspaper. And they talked about Axelrod, you know, cons- and Rubio. I think Rubio, Axelrod, Rupert Murdoch, when they're trying to push Rubio's amnesty through. And the point of, of, of this is the key was Fox has got to stop talking about immigration. It isn't, oh, we have to tell the American people about how we're going to amnesty all these illegals because they're going to love us. No, it's the, the way we win is by having total silence. If no one in the media talks about it, that's how we win. And that is the way the immigration issue has been uh, for for 20 years. You can he- talk about anything else. Oh, my gosh, we will talk about moving that embassy until we're blue in the face. We'll talk about ISIS. ISIS, ISIS, ISIS. ISIS doesn't kill Americans. <laughs> Illegal immigrants are killing Americans. It, it, it would be as if, um, you know, we're Poland, in, in 1938, and the whole country is consumed with the Chaka War in South America. Hey, could you notice what's happening right there on your border? Have you heard of this guy, Hitler? <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's great. It's such an important point, Anne, and your important voice in this debate because you are – uh, you become a single issue voter, and I, it is an issue that is an existential threat to not just this party, but to the entire country. And the other thing Anna, is that there are other problems that are coming up on uh, the horizon. I was uh, reading some some in depth reporting that we have coming up for next year uh, from our, our technology vertical, and the the threat of automation, the threat the threat of AI, just the the fact that the technology is outpacing our ability to think through what it means for a society to have this this high tech world. Uh, we got to start thinking about this stuff. We don't even have it doesn't even matter though at this point because that problem may be five ten years off. We can't even go there yet. We need to resolve this quick, and that's by uh, getting the wall built and putting an end to all this discussion of amnesty, which should never happen. And I thought this is why we went to the polls in 2016. Here we are Christmas 2017, and and we are where we are. So that brings me to my next question for you, which is – Give me your assessment of, of Washington, D.C., a, a year of attempt. Uh, the president is attempting to drain the swamp, at least to some degree. Uh, but there are just so many swamp creatures out there. I sometimes feel like the battle's more intense than it even was. It's definitely worse than I had imagined. But um, I would say President Trump is a less good swamp cleaner than one might have hoped for. Um, you know, I've I've said this before, so... Um, you, you know my, my plan. Everyone always wants to – people are frequently proposing um, that I have a TV show. Um, and I've always said, no, 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 I'm a writer. I wouldn't have time. I need time to mull and think and write. Um, but there was one TV show that I finally thought of that I would have. It would only be one episode um, where I invite every member of the Trump White House, the Trump cabinet, the Trump – um, political appointees on my show. Well, I might be able to get, you know, five episodes out of this. I hook them up to a polygraph machine and I ask them, did you vote for Trump? Because by my reading, I think there are at most two members of the White House and cabinet who actually voted for Trump um, 
or would have voted for Trump in the primary. So, you know, a lot of the problem here is of his own making. Every once in a while, Stephen Miller does have to sleep. And then, you know, the rest of them, who are all amnesty advocates, are slipping in um, and, and weeping about the dreamers, the ones I want to deport first. Yeah, I like the idea of deporting it for it's such great it, it, it it's such great theater that I and you don't have to comment on that Anne. I just love that your uh, understanding of the media is so necessary. Oh, um, in my case it's just actual blind hatred. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is good. See, this is uh, just a, a good, great commentary. All right. So, uh we got to take one more break here. When we return, I'm going to continue to get Ian Coulter's assessment of the world as we know it, America in 2017, the first Trump Christmas as president. I think there's a lot of good, but we're missing out on some really big things, and uh, we're going to talk about some of those and some more Americana chit-chat when we return. Alex and Ann for Christmas. We'll be right back. You'll be able to listen to much of this interview at Breitbart.com, but I always recommend getting the shows on demand, commercial-free, best way to listen. It's how I listen to all the great shows we have. We also have Breitbart News tonight, every night. That's 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. It's going to largely be based out of L.A., so you'll uh, – and I think you'll be up for that show, so hopefully you'll get to talk to my pals uh, Joel and Rebecca. Oh, yeah, um, I love them. Yeah, they're 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 great. Uh, overall, it's been a good year, and I think that the, the, the there's a lot more to celebrate than people would have thought. And we've spent the first couple segments uh, on the key point that Ann and I agree on, which is all of it is moot if we don't uh, end any of this DACA amnesty talk and we don't get the wall up. And if that doesn't happen by the time we head to the polls next November, uh, I think we are looking for a, a we we literally the country is uh, going to be on a precipice. Uh, but let's talk about some other things that are more forward thinking. And hey, let's what, talk about yeah. the media and the FBI business. Great. Let's do that. OK. All I want to say about that is um, and this <laughs> FBI agent struck and yeah. his insurance policy in case we're, we're well positioned here at the FBI. And mm. he probably won't win. But if he wins, you know, us being here, it's kind of an insurance policy. Um, totally, totally outrageous, really shocking. Um, he was working for, for Mueller's investigation. And I know this is kind of unfair because um, those of you out in, in, in TV land, um, you, you may have noticed that around holidays like Christmas and New Year's, we're not getting the top talent on TV. It used to be my favorite time to watch TV. We'd go to sale every year. They couldn't get me out of my room because, <laughs> because even, even like the cameramen aren't going to be like your A cameraman. Everybody's taking yeah, Christmas off. Right. And so they're always looking at the wrong cameras. They're always mid-sentence <laughs> and they cut to a commercial break. It's totally hilarious. So could be unfair here. But um, more on Republicans going on TV and being asked about this. The big, big talking point on MSNBC and CNN is, oh, well, so FBI agents aren't allowed to have political positions. Maybe, maybe Congress can't do their job. And, uh, you know, a lot of FBI agents, they voted for Trump. Can they not do their job? No, it's not about a general job at, at the FBI. The point is what Mueller has been re- tasked to investigate is a specific specific alleged crime by the president of the United States for something like that you need you, you, I mean forget even the appearance I'm which is bad yes. enough you don't want prosecutors who are hungry, who are anxious to get the guy and right. screw the defendant. What you want is fair prosecutors. Yes. This isn't you want somebody hungry, you know, if you're hiring someone to clean your house. You want somebody hungry if you're going after a known drug cartel. But when you were in, investigating a potential crime by the president of the United States, you want fair prosecutors, right. not people who have exchanged emails saying, get this guy. We aren't talking about general FBI agents out there. We are talking about a specific investigation into the president of the United States, and it is outrageous the people Mueller hired. Yeah, it is outrageous. And once I figured out, and or once we were told, I, I didn't figure this out myself, but once we were told that the Mueller investigation, and, and I'm not a Mueller truther. I think he's going to find some stuff. Uh, I, I've got my eye on Jared like uh, Chris Christie does. <laughs> 
Mr. And, Perfect, according yeah, yeah. to Breitbart. <laughs> yeah, 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 Mr. Perfect. Yeah, th- that's his own family's branding. You know where that came from, man. Th- that's how his family brands his his company in uh, in Asia when they're doing <laughs> deals in Asia. They refer to him as Mr. Perfect. That's where I got that. And, it uh, th- always makes me laugh. <laughs> it always makes me laugh, too, and he will always be Mr. Perfect. It's the prince emoji with the crown also. Uh, so, so, so we've got those two. Um, but and by the way, I bear yeah. Jared no ill will. I love that he supports his father-in-law. He's, mm. um, from what I know, a good guy. But, you know, this would be like me jumping in and demanding I run the real estate company or, yeah. or you know, signing up with Ivanka. And, okay, let me tell you how to market these shoes. Let me do, yes. we're, okay, we're going to get them made. No, not China. We're going to Brooklyn to get them made. The, this isn't what they've done, and Trump is in the fight of his life. He's walking on a tightrope. There are people who know how to do it. It absolutely enrages me. I mean, this idea that, oh, you know, well, who could he hire? Oh, I'll tell you some people he could have hired. Corey right. Lewandowski, Pat Cadell, Mickey Kaus. By the way, I don't even know if any of them are free or would take a job. But they're the ones he ought to be demanding working for his White House. They know politics. They agree with Trump on his, on his most important issue. Cadell probably agrees with him on everything. Cadell, the great wonder child pollster who got that lunatic George McGovern nominated when, he, when Cadell, he Cadell, when he mm. was an undergraduate at Harvard. But he loves America, and he was... He was a total Trumpster. Why on right. earth would you not have that kind of talent? Why doesn't Pat Cannell go advise Ivanka on how to make shoes? It's just retarded. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's a, and you know Pat Cannell is a great friend of the Breitbart site. We had him on every day for the last several months in the run-up to 2016. Uh, and I called him the Oracle because he was the one who – I know you saw this stuff very early on. I saw it early on. Bannon did. Michael Savage. There's a few guys – Cadell was the first one, as far as I remember, who was out there saying, uh, the, what are the key issues? Identifying trade, identifying immigration, identifying the, the bubbling populist anger, uh, people who are sort of blue-collar Democrats looking yes. for an excuse to go right. He was the first one to see all of that. And again, it's a last I, – I, I don't know if he was ever even considered. Maybe he was no. uh, for a White House gig. No, I don't. No, 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 no. People who can actually help Trump accomplish what he needs to get accomplished. And this is what's so frustrating. This is once um, in a a millennium opportunity. Um, (laughs) I mean, having Trump run for the presidency, it was every day I'd wake up and I'd feel like I was dreaming listening to to him talk and the media and and uh, the other Republicans just um, impotently trying to strike at him, and he rose like a phoenix because of those issues, and then he gets in, and he's blowing it! All right. Well, and, and I don't want to get you too upset on Christmas. So, so let's. <laughs> it's a though. though yeah, let's I, do I do happy love Christmas the, stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let, let's do some more happy Christmas stories. I do love the uh, heckling of uh, of Javanka for Christmas. That that would be a Christmas gift for me. But I want to keep the. Uh, <laughs> but again, uh, uh, I don't yeah. bear them any ill will personally any more than I think you know. I'm an incompetent and an idiot, but making shoes or buying massive real estate, it's not what I've spent my entire life doing. There are people who have spent their entire lives figuring out politics and knowing how the government works and knowing how to beat liberals at their own game, and none of them, uh, other than Stephen Miller, are working for Trump. So do you think that uh, if – do you disagree with the – what I was reading in some papers uh, earlier this week that – if it was not for Ivanka Trump, we'd have a marginal tax rate of 93 oh. <laughs> percent. It's, it's pretty much what I saw. I mean, that, that, that's sort of the gist of it. I don't know if that's verbatim what I read. All right. Let's see. And, and, well, and, it's by the way, uh, they would have started with something other than tax yeah. cuts, and that would have been great. Yeah, and thank God we still have uh, Stephen Miller and Julia Hahn and a few others uh, inside who are fighting the good fight. But what's amazing here, Ian, and this is something that you've pointed out, is when the president goes with his own instincts, it seems to work out well. And I'm sort of surprised at how often it seems like he'll take a line on certain things. Uh, The way he was speaking about in his national security strategy speech, uh, the way he was talking about how if we don't have a border, we don't have a nation. I mean, that's straight out of the Coulter or Marlowe playbook. 
playbook. And it's like, you know, there's no one other than Steve Miller who's in there, as far as I know, uh, who uses that type of language. I mean, maybe there are, and I'd love to meet these people. Uh, but it seems like that's the anti Javanka line. It seems like the anti HR McMaster line. I mean, it's. Uh, it's amazing how he is able to buck even the people who are around him, uh, yeah. unless there's something going on that I, I don't know about, and he actually has all of these secret MAGA people who are in his ear constantly. Well, before um, I actually do slip my wrist, <laughs> I will say um, one of the just amazing, tremendous, and unprecedented surprising things about Donald Trump from the very beginning is – his political instincts are unbelievable. I mean, you could you always felt like with some of these Republicans, well, if you talk to them, you could maneuver them, you could get them to phrase it the right way. No, at any point, I would say, at least in the last 10 years, I mean, he said some, he was a little, you know, buffoonish before that in his, in his political opinions anyway, um, almost O'Reilly-esque. But once he started paying attention to politics, you could wake him up in the middle of the night, throw a glass of cold water on him, and he would give you the right answer. His instincts, 100%, like no one I've ever seen. <laughs> so what's he doing? Come back to your political instincts. Come back, little lassie. Okay, so Anne, give us something you're happy about this Christmas that was, that was unexpected. Um, well, Anwar, I had no idea that was coming. Yeah, that's amazing, and that goes with with Keystone and Paris, and and a lot of things that that they, they kind of come and go in the media. But I was actually a little surprised that that the Anwar news cycle was virtually non-existent. I mean, this was everything fifteen years or so ago when this debate yeah. was raging, it and was the just media a, didn't even complain about it. It shows you. It shows you. You know, it is like the immigration issue. Um, they may want. They may think they can taunt us on MSNBC with yeah. with you know racial entire audience of 2 million people in a, in a country of 320 million people. But by and large, the, the mass um, third world immigration advocates, they know their best bet is don't let anybody talk about it. Don't let anybody think about it. We don't want people opening the newspaper and saying, hmm, where's the article on immigration? We just don't want it even entering their minds. That's their approach you talk about immigration, and you will win, conservatives. Okay, so here, here's some math here, Ann, and we've only got four or five minutes left. But I, I want to walk you through a, a scenario that's sort of coming together because it seems like the Democrats are really pandering towards the, the, the Maddow audience at this point. The rising stars this year have been, on the left, have been uh, extreme leftists. Like uh, the, in terms of media, all these uh, o Obama veterans – uh, who are extremely left wing in terms of politicians, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Maxine Waters has had a resurgence, uh, Kamala Harris. These are all hard left people. Uh, the Mueller investigation, when the, the second we learn that he's focusing on events that took place after the election, we know it's not Russia collusion. So we know the president's not actually going to get impeached unless something crazy happens. Oh, uh, all the, that the, has to happen is that he loses the House and the Senate. Don't imagine fine. that they care about the law or the meaning of high crimes and misdemeanors. Okay. 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 Fine. But but the the political will that it's going to be a much tougher sell when the the Mueller probe is not going to have proved uh, what it set out to prove. So they're going to have to find something just totally in, insane. Uh, I think it'll and be so, a but, tweet. They'll impeach him over a tweet. No okay, Democrats but, but, are not but, but interested is, in the law or um, you know cus customs. They do not care. They want to get rid of Trump, and their base is so ginned up. If they take the House and the Senate, and if Trump doesn't build the wall. The millions of people who hadn't voted in 30 years and came out to vote for him, I think, are going to be mighty discouraged. OK, so so let's say the wall gets built and then let's say that uh, which is, I can't believe that I, I actually have to caveat that, that if it gets built, uh, which is which is a shame. But let's say that happens. The left continues to play towards the resistance crowd. Uh, do you think that's an effective strategy or is the left essentially promising that the tax cuts are going to backfire, they won't, uh, promising that R Russia collusion and impeachment, which is, I think, increasingly unlikely. Do you think there's a chance that the left are actually setting themselves up for a massive fall by overpromising here? No, I don't, because I really, unfortunately, um, you know, as the president of Singapore said, 
many years ago and explaining why he was not allowing immigration into Singapore. Um, the more multi-ethnic a society becomes, um, people stop voting on, on their social interests, their economic interests. Um, they vote on their ethnic group, and I think that's what the Democrats are counting on. They can so get as crazy as you want to be. And Ann Coulter, Merry Christmas.